These are my two main thresholds. Some people have said that, have gone as far as saying because of political machinations, who actually gets indicted in the end is out of the Commission's hands. How do you react to that? <laughs> well, I can tell you that I'm the only one who will decide who gets indicted. And my decision will be based on one thing and one thing only, will be based on the evidence. So whoever wants to do machination or whatever, I mean, good luck to them because I've been in the business for a long time and the only thing that drives me is the evidence. And as I said, I will indict when I'm ready to do so, not one minute earlier and not one minute later. Does it bother you when people talk <coughs> about the deal, that there's a deal out there that's been working? <laughs> Like everybody else, I've heard that. Uh, they talk about the, uh, the Lockerbie-type deal and so on. There's nothing I can do about it. All I know is what my process is about, is that we have a mandate, we move forward, and the only body that could stop us, basically, is the Security Council. So as long, and, and, and frankly, my, we're aware of the political issues surrounding us, of course. We navigate through that. But at the end of the day, my process is a legal process, and my team is not influenced, nor am I, by political consideration. This is what independence is about. The <clears throat> question then would be, well, then how much harder is your job? It's a quite a delicate navigation that you've got to do. It's not just political machinations, but geopolitical machinations. We're talking about the U.S., Syria, all of these different players who are involved. How much tougher does that make your job? Well. It is tough because it is a complex investigation, as simple as that. I mean, any terrorist investigation is complex. And to find the evidence in uh, um, an explosion, a murder of that magnitude, of 1,800 kilos of dynamite, I mean, this is quite unheard of, that amount of dynamite used in, a, in a one killing. And <clears throat> the, the, to, to find the pieces takes a long time. So, so I'm not worried about anything else. What I'm concerned with, focused on, is to get to the bottom of it, to get to the truth. And at, at some point, it's important not to be, uh, not to be um, um, put off or, or, or just uh, um, misguided by things that are not relevant to your, to your investigation. So, so, as I said, we're, we're quite focused. I'm sure you don't need me to tell you, but I'm sure you realize that your decisions, your indictments, your prosecution, that tribunal, could change the face of this region? Well, I'm very conscious of the fact that there are very heavy responsibilities that have been put on my shoulders. And I can assure people that the decisions that are made are made cautiously, professionally, and more importantly, on a principled basis. How cautiously? Cautiously, you need to be aware of what's going on. But at the end of the day, you should not be uh, influenced or governed by some possible consequences of your decision. Otherwise, then you would no longer be independent and you would be playing those who want to play you. Soon you'll be taking off the hat of commissioner and then putting on the hat of prosecutor. This could still ultimately cost you your life. Is it worth it? Well, <laughs> you could cross the street and be hit by a bus and die. I think that, as I've said before, I'm not a masochist. I mean, and I know what the risks are, but at the same time, I know that uh, every possible measure is taken for that not to happen. Uh, I could die of a heart attack. I mean, so, so frankly, I think that when you believe in something, you have to be ready to, to stand up for what you believe in. And I think that to put an end to impunity to allow the Lebanese people to believe in a system of justice that if you commit a crime, you will pay the price. I think this is an ideal that's worth fighting for. You said several times in our time with you here that because you are in retirement, you have a take it or leave it attitude towards this job. What is your threshold? At what point would you be willing to walk away from this, this entire enterprise? Well, if people prevent me from doing my job, I mean, I have a mandate to do. It's not an easy mandate. And people want me, and, and people have invested tons of money into the tribunal, the contribution. I mean, it's an expensive proposition. There's no question about it. 
But if at, at some point I feel that people are not willing to give me the tool, of course within reasons, uh, they, they're not willing to give me the tool to do the job, then I would have to ask serious questions as to whether do you want me to really do the job or don't you? And at that point, um, I would have to ask myself, do I stay on or do I go back to retirement? Would you ever visit Lebanon again? I wish, I wish I would be able to come back to Lebanon as a tourist, to be able to mingle with people, to talk to people, and to, to, to visit this wonderful country. I mean, this is one of my main regrets, not having been able to see the country. <clears throat> I travel in convoys with uh, dark tinted windows you barely see outside. Um, and, and what I know of Lebanon, basically, is the route between here and the airport, or the Grand Sarai, where the Prime Minister is. But in a way, it'll be a relief for you to leave. Not really, you know. I'll be leaving with a lot of regret uh, because this is a place that, notwithstanding the the environment in which we operate, it, it's it's a wonderful country. I mean, you really get attached to people, the the, the, the people of Lebanon, and um, it, it's. Uh, I got used to this country, and I really like it. And if I could, I would stay. Thank you very much, Krishna. You're welcome.